we can uh, slowly start. In any case, this session is a bit different since it's a uh, live stream, so people can follow directly on Facebook or watch it later. And if they want to join through the Zoom links, um, they can come and ask questions. So uh, let's get it um, going. Thank you very much for joining, uh, first of all, uh, Jenny and Alice. Um, this uh, and everyone who's following us, um, this uh, is a session that is part of the LLL project that ELC has um, launched in the context of the, the, the COVID crisis because we felt like we wanted to be close to our community and uh, talk to each other and get to know each other and we've been doing this for uh, several weeks now, twice per day. And as the end of lockdown is approaching and learning from uh, some of our previous sessions, we are slightly uh, adjusting the concept to coming back to more social in-person life and maybe going back to our um, offices by reducing slowly the number of sessions, but by opening some of them to uh, uh, more people by making them live and also by having uh, guests. So we had already some, uh, they were moderated by Joel and Alice in the past with speakers that were uh, really great uh, and generated a lot of uh, attendance and uh, interactions. And so following this, uh, we had the idea of having one uh, in English about media and activism. And of course this feels uh, super topical since we kind of all had to improvise ourselves media activists these days by being forced to operate online, but it's really great to have two experts to <laughs> tell us more about how, how it's done and how they got there. Um, I um, will not introduce them much because I think it's part of their personal stories, part of the activism, and I want them to tell you about it. Um, and so, uh, what else should I tell you for now? It's yes, we have one hour and a half to give you more space to uh, have Q&A at the end. And also because we're sharing a little more, more content throughout the, this discussion. So we have um, two very unapologetic, very visible lesbians from, from France and from Albania, uh, who have um, made their faces uh, become part of the movement and who have become uh, in the process uh, excellent um, users of all tools to advance the cause and to pass their messages and in the process have also experienced perhaps some backlash so we'll hear about that but also some really uh, moving and empowering and powerful and beautiful moments of um, for example tv uh, lesbian visibility which uh, we'll, we'll enjoy in a minute um, and i think the way i i, I always like to think especially about the two of you and having followed your activities was to be amazed at how from the opponents you sort of changed uh, people's minds slowly by seeing how people loved to hate you and maybe slowly they started hating how much they loved you because they they still are fascinated and you they warmed up to you and um i i would like to ask jenny to start telling uh, us about uh, how this how you got into all this and um well the floor is yours hello everyone uh, thanks for for inviting me in this uh, platform for me it's always a pleasure to share my story uh, i think it's uh, it's 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 become a very good a very important part of my not only my act activism but also it has helped me as a way of uh, of accepting myself and of uh, knowing better myself every time i tell my story it's like a process of catharsis uh, before i start maybe it's uh, it's good to to uh, share with the public a little the context in which i've been grown up you know in albania because maybe many of, of the, the the people that are listening to us don't have that much information on my country uh, so uh, my name is uh, jenny i'm an lgbti activist for 10 years now i'm from albania uh, which uh, which is a small country near greece and uh, <clears throat> italy kosovo macedonia and montenegro um, 
the reality in which I grew up uh, is a reality. Uh, I was born during communism, before the end of communism, actually, uh, in a period where LGBTI people uh, being LGBT was criminalized in Albania for the 10 years uh, you would get if you would be identified as being uh, a gay mostly, because for lesbian it was different. Uh, we were unexistent uh, totally. Even the word didn't exist, the word lesbian. Uh, and uh, in a, it was a culture when talking about LGBTI issues was a taboo. We had only one term to identify uh, gay people and lesbians that was pederas, that all of us know it's not even the, 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 the right term. Uh, and um, I grew up in this kind of environment when people wouldn't even dare to talk about LGBTI issues because it was shameful to even say the word. Uh, and in a culture where we didn't have anything about, like we didn't had internet in that period, for example. So even if we wanted to inform ourselves, it would be very, very hard to inform yourself. Uh, so for many years, I knew, uh, till the age of seven, I knew that I was attracted to women, but as you don't have words, sometimes you don't even know how to articulate and how to understand what your feelings are. So it took me many years, like when I was uh, 13, 14, that I actually started to really realize and understand better myself. And I remember when I was 14, for the first time, I saw a lesbian movie. That was Gia, this movie with uh, Angeline Jolie. Many of you may have, have seen it. Uh, and <clears throat> I was so happy of watching it that every night I would put my TV station in the same uh, station where the movie was shown, just waiting for, for them to reshow it. Uh, it's it's desperate, but it also shows like how how important it is for people of our community, like to have figures to identify with, and to have culture that identifies us and represents us. Uh, it's much different now for for the new generation, and I'm very happy for that. But to grow up in this kind of uh, of uh, environment made me feel very bad for many years and many years in my uh, my teenagehood uh, i always say it uh, I, I i didn't live my teenagehood as many other teenagers like for many years i started to suffer from depression i had suicidal thoughts every day of my life uh, and uh, it's like living in a in a in a total darkness and uh, just when I was like uh, 21, um, I, I also have a quote that I always use. My friends make a lot of fun of that quote now. I say the only lesbians I knew for many years was myself reflected in the mirror. And that's not, that's not nice at all. Uh, but uh, anyway, that, that's like a quote that represents my existence of, the, of those years. Uh, and I didn't even have friends like that belonged to the community until I was 19, uh, 18. Uh, and uh, that's actually the, the period when I, I met two American lesbians that were living in Albania. They were a couple. Uh, and when a friend of me told me, Jenny, look, I'm going to present you with uh, two American lesbians, uh, in the first moment, I saw it as an opportunity to know a partner, you know, <laughs> meet a partner. But then when I met them, I realized that they were both married, much more uh, older than me. And they became as, as a family for me. Uh, and they were the ones that presented me with the possibility of uh, and importance of having a community and start something in Albania. So uh, I got together with them and we started by I didn't even knew what being an activist was in, in, in those year. I never even thought that uh, I would uh, be publicly out to talk not, not only about my story, but to talk about uh, other people's stories also. Uh, and at this moment, we decided, like, what can we do in a country where 
most of people think LGBTI people don't exist. Most of people think that if you are LGBT, you have catch the disease in the West or you have been influenced by the Western culture. culture. And what we, what we did was, uh, okay, let's open a Facebook group that we call the Alliance Against Discrimination of LGBTI People. And we saw that in two months, we had around 500 people uh, joining the group and contacting us to meet. So uh, me and Mindy started to go in coffees to meet people talk to them and we their their house actually turned up into like firstly a lesbian a lesbian like a shelter and then it it started to be more inclusive and we had a lot of gay guys also getting on board but as a beginning it was just a group of a small like a small group of four to five lesbians uh, and uh, but by having this presence online uh, helped us a lot to outreach the community because most of people that joined had uh, fake profiles uh, and the social media give to the community the possibility of anonymity and to feel safer. Uh, and uh, then we said, okay, because once you start activism, I understand like uh, you cannot stop it anymore and you want more and more. Uh, so we started uh, to go in the streets and maybe now you can show uh, one of the slides. Yeah, uh, we started to go in the streets and to do these actions. Uh, this is uh, from the picture. This is the first action we did on 17th of May 2009. Uh, we were just three lesbians. Uh, we decided to do the action during the night because we were very afraid we were going to be attacked. The poster says homophobia is a social disease. Uh, I printed this poster in my daily job. I was working in the government. It was my first job after I finished university. And I was so scared. I remember even now like the feeling of having my boss coming in the office and getting me printing these posters because there were a lot like 300 posters and I was like what's gonna happen to me if he gets me printing this uh, but anyway we, we printed the poster we didn't know how to put the posters like in the walls and in the trees because we have never ha had made a, an action before so we bought this uh, duct tape that were not that practical we understood after uh, and we were like uh, going in, uh, going uh, around 12 o'clock of the night, uh, putting the posters in the in the tree, going around the tree with the tape, so we could uh, make it sure that the poster would have tape all around. So when people would like to to take it off, it would be harder. And uh, in one moment where we were putting the poster, a policeman comes and he says oh you are such great young people informing uh, uh, the society about sexual transmitted diseases he thought homophobia was a sex sexual transmitted disease and we were like wow like we understood that maybe many people wouldn't understand what the poster were talking about so maybe we were not in the risk that we thought and uh, that's, I always remember that as one of the most beautiful night, uh, nights of my life because uh, the feeling of uh, giving a purpose to your life, you know, and making something that is going to tell to the public, uh, to the mostly to LGBTI people that uh, something is happening in Albania, even though it's a small thing like putting posters and uh, maybe if you go uh, after that, like uh, pr uh, painting some benches, uh, the idea was like how to kind of uh, be there, uh, use the public space that has always been denied to our community, like our existence in, in, in the public. And we wanted to, uh, if you just show uh, uh, down, you should have some painting the benches. Uh, th this, uh, this is uh, before that. Uh, that's another campaign. You can you can leave it to that. It's okay. This is like and then we started after doing these actions during the night. Uh, we started to do actions uh, during the day, and that was the first one that we did. Doctors of homophobia. It's uh, up. Yeah. Uh, 
And uh, I remember doing this first action, people started to spit me in my face and always like, and they usually do it when after reading what we were writing, we were giving actual information on, on being LGBT and homophobia. And uh, they usually do it, they spit in your face to humiliate you, but that's the last of the things that I was feeling when they spit it at me because I was feeling so proud of us being out there in during the day for the first time in the daylight uh, and uh, being with such like brave, uh, brave friends like uh, many of those were. Uh, and it was so, so much important to have our presence during the day that uh, humiliation was not working. So when you are an activist, every means that others might use to, to kind of uh, get you down and humiliate you. I think the, 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 the strength you get from what you do goes beyond anything. Uh, then we created this, uh, uh, we started to do some social activities to bring the community together and uh, Les Bishat, Les Bis is our football team called. Uh, and it started in 2010 and it was the first time like that we were having so many lesbians gathering together and not only playing football but also after like having some beers and drinking and sharing their lives and problems with each other. Um, so uh, we, uh, in the first two, three years, everything was very grassroots. Everything was mostly about community building. And actually the, those are the years that I miss most now. <laughs> and these are like from the, the campaigns we did with graffitis. For sure, after two, two days, you wouldn't see the graffiti like that anymore. They would go and uh, like put some black uh, ink on that but we would do a graffiti in another place like and you have down some other examples of, of graffiti so we would never never stop uh, and uh, then uh, from being like mostly based on strengthening community in 2010 uh, we had the prime minister announcing that he was going to approve gay marriages when actually no one uh, we can surpass it these are some uh, public awareness campaigns. I started to go in schools and talk. Uh, and then we can leave it here. So I explain a little how we came till here. And then uh, we, uh, in 2010, we became more public as a movement because the prime minister of Albania gave the statement that uh, he was gonna approve gay marriage. Actually, it was about uh, anti-discrimination law so he did it just to make a big uh, media fuss, but it gave us possibility as an underground community to be start and be more vocal in media. So we, we started to issue our first press releases. I started to give my first interviews, but not with my face. I was not out yet. I would always use like other names, uh, not my real name, uh, but I will always tell my story actually. Uh, and uh, for for more than one year, that that was like the the reality. Like I was uh, uh, I was uh, being in the closet, but also trying to talk in this uh, with with no no face. But at least trying to bring out some some stories out there because the the media had a huge interest in that. You could see that. Uh, they they really wanted to 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 maybe not understand it's a big word but at least to to get some stories and to know some stories of the community uh, and in 2012 uh, we decided to make uh, the pride uh, uh, the pride that we did for the first time we were only 20 uh, uh, 12 people sorry uh, many people don't even call it called it a pride in those years because they were like, ah, but it's uh, not a big number of people, but pride is not about numbers. And we that we belong to the LGBT community, we, we know that. Um, the pride was, uh, we, we were attacked in the first seconds when we started with some gas bombs, but that's also one of the most beautiful days of my life because I've walked in the boulevard when we, when we uh, biked for 
24 years of my life and none of those times I felt as free as I felt that day biking uh, and uh, as, as a public out person, as, a, as, as an LGBTI person. And uh, may, uh, maybe we go. Yeah, and here, that's the moment actually, some days, this happened some days before doing the first Pride. This was the most difficult moment of my life, not beautiful. <laughs> Uh, this is actually the first debate that was organized. It's one of the biggest shows, political shows in Albania. Before we organized the Pride, some days before, they decided to make this show on LGBTI, like uh, on the Pride. Uh, and, you know, the, the format of the panel was you have these three pro uh, organizing of the Pride that was a well known uh, journalist, a well known activist, and Christy my partner in crimes, an activist, but he was not out yet in, the, in, in that period and journalist. And then there was the, the against panel that was um, a Muslim uh, representative, a woman. Uh, there was a priest uh, and there was this uh, politician from a very conservative uh, party. And uh, before going there, uh, my family knew about me uh, I was out to my family. My mother told me, Jenny, please don't talk. Like, don't like take the microphone and don't talk in this show. Actually, I was supposed to stay in the audience and I was staying in the audience. I went there to support Christine, my colleague. And I said, no, I promise you, you know, I'm not gonna come out. And uh, at that moment, uh, when the debate started, it was a horrible debate, like very aggressive, a lot of hate speech, a lot of life threatening because the, the guy that was from the conservative party threatened my, my Christy, my, my colleague, that he was going to cut his throat during the advertisement of the show. Uh, and I got so pissed that I said, look, Jenny, if you don't fucking talk now, you are never going to talk in your life. And when the, the, the show was going on, everyone was saying, but uh, okay, these LGBT people want to do this pride, but where are LGBT people? Because no one, even in the studio, no one is LGBT. Like we are talking about them and they are nowhere. And at that moment I told to the journalist, give me the microphone. And I remember getting the microphone and having three cameras on my face. And I was like, fuck, what, what am I gonna say now? <laughs> like, and, uh, and I, I started to say that, uh, you know, people like me, like, uh, don't come out because there are people like you uh, existing out there and threatening our existence. Uh, I was talking to the, this, uh, this uh, politician that was threatening Christy. And, uh, and then at what, that moment, like, and, and I said, like, uh, it's, uh, it's very, uh, I said that what I wanted to say in, in that moment was that we are, uh, we exist and we have existed and we are going to exist, whatever you say. Uh, and at that moment, the journalist oh, said, oh, we have a lesbian in the audience. Like it was a big outing and he was asking me my name and my age. And, uh, and then uh, a lot of people were texting me because it was a live show. And they were like, oh my God, Jenny, what did you do like right now? And my, my father texted me and he said like, oh my God, like you are destroying your life. And uh, I remember that uh, after the show finished, I said like, oh my God, what's going to happen with my life? I couldn't go home. I went to some friends and they were in their pajamas and they were like, oh my God, what's going to happen to you tomorrow uh, when you walk in the streets? And actually what happened when I walked in the streets is that literally every person that was looking at me, they were pointing the finger and saying, Oh, look at the lesbian that was on TV last night. And I, I, I really felt like an alien, like walking in the, in, in the streets of Tirana. And from that moment on, like that was my reality for many years, like having people staring at you and having people talking to you and 
sometimes threatening, but uh, at least not being that physical. Uh, but I think that that was uh, an important moment, uh, not only for me, because at least for, for, for the first time I was feeling free, but that was a very important moment for the movement at large, because it was uh, the moment that I was not talking anymore only about my story, but I was talking about lives of many people that couldn't be vocal and couldn't share their stories and couldn't talk. And for the first time, I, I had the possibility to break down all the stereotypes that existed towards our community and make people understand that, you know, we are like everyone else. And I started to share my life what was private uh, ended in that point uh, because I, I decided to use my, 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 my life, um, uh, also my personal life as a mean of, of uh, uh, raising awareness about our community. Uh, so maybe I talk too much. How much time do I have? Did I finish my time? Ah. We, we go as long as we need to, but uh, no, no, I just wanted to uh, see you a little bit more because with all the slides, but uh, no, no, if you want to, um, I think it's nice if you take us all the way to become yeah. the, the face. Yeah, um, yeah if, uh, from that moment, many things happened. Uh, we used to, the Pride has been going on for eight years now. It started with 12, we were like more than 300 uh, last year. Uh, when, it, when it comes to media, actually, uh, the media in the beginning started just by seeing it as an exotic issue. Uh, oh, and this is very, very interesting. I, like I started from the point of going to TV station and always throwing up before going there and always being nervous into going there and only going there not to enjoy it, but going there because I had to, because uh, that was the only way that we had to, uh, to, change, uh, to change people's minds and people's uh, hearts. Uh, going into a position like you see here, a very nice position, of starting to enjoy uh, like uh, being in, in, uh, in media, and this is actually a TV show where they invited me. It's like Dancing with the Stars, where you dance with very cute uh, like uh, dancers. Uh, and even though I really didn't know how to dance, uh, I, 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 I was always having some cognac before going there and uh, trying to learn the moves and having a lot of fun because I had like three girls that were trying to help me dance. And I remember that uh, there was a kiss that was supposed to happen in the end of the dance. But one night before uh, the, 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 the program announced in Facebook that I was going to be in the show and they had so much hate speech from the public that they were afraid actually of doing the kiss in the end of the, the dance. So they changed it. And the girl, uh, she was amazing dancer, but she was so afraid of dancing with me and doing this performance because she was afraid of what her family would think. And she was afraid of what her fans would think. Uh, but we did it and it was amazing. And I know you are gonna send the link after, after we, uh, when, or when we finish. And it was, uh, it was amazing because also one, one of the, when, I, when we finished, the public was applauding. I never expected it. I was expecting some like boo or uh, some a total different reaction, but it was like an, an amazing uh, experience. And it was the first time that two women were, were dancing. I, on, I think we want to see a little bit. No, I think it's, I mean, I enjoy watching it every time. It's quite exceptional. And can I just say, lesbian or not, congratulations on the dancing. I, I don't, I couldn't align one of those steps. So I'm very impressed <laughs> to begin with. Um, and also because uh, it takes some some courage, but it's phenomenal and beautiful. And um, so, 
uh, yeah, we we are realized uh, together with Christy because uh, Christy uh, is a journalist. Uh, it's uh, my uh, my my partner in crime. I call him, uh, and as he was a journal, he's a journalist, and he knew very well how media uh, works. Uh, we understood that once we had media on board. Uh, we would achieve uh, a lot when it comes to the LGBTI uh, movement. And what we, what we try to do is firstly, like build, uh, build a personal uh, interaction with the journalist and then like be in their shows. And like uh, this, for example, is another show that was very funny because the, it's, it's like a fun show when you do games and stuff. And we were talking actually about an exhibition uh, of a photographer that is a feminist and she wanted, uh, she did this project of portraying the life of women. And she decided to have me and my partner also as a subject for her pictures. Uh, and uh, we were invited in, in this journalist uh, show, Rosa is her name, and she wanted to kiss me live on, on, on the show. That's why she, this, there is this strange pose. And I said to her like, uh, look, if you kiss me here tonight, I'll not have a place to sleep because my partner is gonna throw me in, <laughs> in the street. <laughs> but uh, anyway, she, she, she makes a lot of fun in the show and uh, she, uh, she, she wanted to provoke me a little. And this is another show. I don't know how to cook, but I don't know why. They always love to invite me in cooking shows. And uh, in this, uh, in this uh, cooking shows, it's very good to participate because they are always seen by, by grandmas and like mothers. And you know, they, they are an amazing audience. And after I go in this kind of shows, I always get a lot of messages from like, uh, uh, mothers and grandmothers that write to me and you can see that how much the perception have changed from the beginning that I was getting curses mostly to now that I, I'm getting messages of encouragement and so the, the, the so the, I think like I've, I've, I've gone from being a political activist in these shows like going in diversifying the, the the kind of shows that I go in with the, the with the aim to reach uh, different audiences because every show has their own audience and uh, to reach much more people and also to normalize you know the idea of, of being LGBTI because people always think that uh, most people have always seen me being in political debates and there I'm very angry <laughs> many times and sometimes I shout <laughs> and sometimes I see I, I seem uh, uh, kind of uh, more aggressive than I actually am and by going in these shows kind of builds another profile helps me to to build another profile because that's not the only piece of me you know and i'm like that because they always put me in front of uh, sometimes ignorant people <laughs> and sometimes you don't know how to deal with ignorance you know and yeah well thanks so much for sharing this because we i think through your story we really see the trajectory of the, the movement and the evolution of people's minds because even though we can see that you basically also play with the scandalous part of it at the end of the day you invited yourself in people's homes through cooking shows and through popular yeah. dance and, and 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 very mediatic shows and um yeah changed the perceptions and from I know from stories from from discussions we've had the two of us also that uh, now people recognize me in the street and it's no longer pointing necessarily at a finger yeah. with a disgust now it's more like a, they all feel like a, you're that granddaughter that they know yeah. or something like yeah. that so I think that's that's very um, powerful and um, we'll, we'll have questions for you on a lot of things after but now I'm gonna ask Alice who has another uh, personal uh, trajectory to share uh, and Alice uh, Coffin in uh, 
France, uh, the, uh, um, the established journalist, but also very visible feminist and lesbian activist. Um, also quite outspoken, quite visible, seizing the, and never uh, refusing an opportunity to, to um, go on TV shows or to write articles that are uh, gonna you know, trigger reactions. Um, so maybe Alice, if you can uh, share with us about uh, your job as a lesbian journalist and how it's been to uh, change the profession maybe from within and also uh, as an activist, how you've uh, used media more broadly. Yeah, hi, hi everyone. And uh, uh, I, I'm really uh, moved by uh, the, the, the presentation that was made by uh, Jenny that I was lucky enough to, to uh, hear uh, also about uh, when we were with uh, um, the Euro Central Asian lesbian uh, uh, community ELC in Tirana uh, um, November, in November. And as a journalist and an activist working on daily um, basis on uh, media activism, I fully uh, measure uh, like how big the achievement uh, which uh, uh, has been uh, uh, made there. So it's both very moving and very um, uh, Powerful. So thanks, uh, Evgenia, for getting us also to hear about it. And thanks for um, giving me an opportunity to tell you about media activism, which is, I think, in itself a word which might need to be uh, explained a little. I, I, I do not strongly believe in a very formal definition. And I guess we all have our definition of words. And it's also a fight in itself to know what the words mean. But I think the media activism is a, a, a word of Fight because many people uh, have um, 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 troubles, uh, like considering uh, that uh, uh, activists uh, could get a place and a role um, to play in the way media are telling the story of the world, which is what they do uh, every day with very strong consequences. The way you tell the news, the way you show entertainment on TV is really uh, um, uh, enormous as an impact. Um, I mean, as important as the political uh, decisions which would be taken by governments. So that's why it's always been my field my uh, uh, of attack and so, Yes, I live in, uh, in Paris, France, and I've been there um, journalist for um, 10 years in a, um, in a very uh, big newsroom uh, in 20 minutes, which is a French most uh, uh, read uh, newspaper. And that's funny how you said like um, uh, established uh, journalist to present me, Evgenia, because you would think so when you graduated to, a, you know, like very big journalism school in France, when you've uh, done so many years in the newsrooms that you would be, uh, nobody would challenge your, your, your title of a journalist, which uh, they have always done with me because along uh, being a journalist, I'm an activist and I'm, I'm an activist doing uh, specifically in all the works, the groups I've, I've been uh, working with, uh, whereas feminist group or um, a lesbian group, I, I was uh, always in charge of the, of the media because that, 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 that's what I know. But, but uh, it's funny how this led me to be challenged uh, by the profession of journalist of whether uh, I was really uh, apt to be uh, called as such. And that's where uh, media activism is really interesting because it's also a blur of the, the very uh, strict borders which have been uh, written by some people, uh, like um, mostly uh, a white men, I think, which would, and straight white men, which would consider that they have interest in considering that journalism is not activism and activism is not uh, journalism and that you have to choose. And there is a reason for this. Uh, it's because they have a, a very strong interest in making sure that people who get the um, enormous privilege to be the one telling what's in the news today, what are we showing the audience, uh, are are not engaged people, are not committed people, are not people from minorities who obviously uh, do want to put, to put something else uh, in the news. So I think a lot of my daily work is to challenge uh, this, uh, th th this border. And this is uh, what I've done as a, uh, as a journalist, and, but also as an activist, because I consider that we activists are also the ones who 
are telling the news and who are telling the missing news. And it's actually, we are in the middle of an LLL session, lockdown, les uh, lockdown, uh, les lockdown listening uh, thing that we created uh, at the beginning of the uh, um, uh, lockdown in different countries with uh, ELC, precisely because we knew we were not going to get from the mainstream media the news we needed as lesbians. We knew that we needed some information of what was going on for us in the country. What were the consequences of political decisions on the lesbian community and what were, what were we facing as lesbians? And we knew we couldn't get them from the mainstream media that they would not be talking about those. So we had to create our own media, our own uh, way of sharing information. And I mean, for me, it's the same as journalism. What I do as a journalist and what I do as an activist is the same. And basically it is to make sure what some people have interest in keeping invisible, of keeping out of the screen to make it visible. That's journalism. I mean, journalism is uh, uh, when good journalism is making sure when some corporations want to hide something they did, you make it visible. When some politician did something wrong, you make it visible. Activism is also all about this, is also about making and most of the case discriminated populations get to the front floor and uh, get the light and make sure they can have a voice of their own. So it's, for me, it's very similar. It's of course, it's a different practice. It's not the same and everything, but there's no point in, in, in really uh, drawing such strict border between them. And for me, this is also my conception of uh, media activism. So putting some activism in journalism, putting some journalism in uh, 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 activism. Um, so this I have done, like I said, in a, a newsroom, a big newsroom. Then uh, I went to be a freelance journalist because there were some topics I could not cover. And in the topic, a lot was about lesbian and feminist issue that they wouldn't let me cover in the, in the newsrooms because they would call me buyers or so on. Uh, so I came more to uh, reach for like uh, foundations or other kind of money which could help me to, to do some uh, uh, work on, on this and uh, so I have a, also a blog where I tackle this issue and then I also do it with a specific group. Well, I thought maybe because uh, like there's, um, uh, we have also this range of questions and I'd be happy to answer about a, a, a lot of things, but I wanted you maybe to bring uh, and thanks for all of the, you uh, uh, watching and listening to bring, well, not to bring home because I think you're all like kind of in your home or, or so on, but to bring with you back from the session a few tips about what I have experienced. And this is only my experience. There are many ways of doing uh, media activism, which I would do like, uh, I'm gonna shorten, shorten this to two parts, like more general uh, uh, tips on uh, media and uh, LGBTI issues. And maybe then get give you an overview of what ELC is doing because ELC is obviously really focused on uh, uh, lesbians. And when it comes to lesbians, it's also very different the way of doing media activism because uh, this community has its own uh, constraints in, in terms of visibility and discrimination, which uh, brings uh, specific kind forms of uh, mechanics and tactics to be visible uh, in, the, in the media, which we have been doing for a few years now. So maybe, can I, sh yeah, so I, uh, I wanted to share some slides. Uh, Evgenia, should I, I have, do I have the permission of as a, to show this? I, you should, but. Okay, on this, perfect. Mm. You need to check with Sylvia, who's the official host. Sylvia, have you distributed the rights? Yes, thank you. Okay, so I, this is like, um, okay. Sorry, I'm looking for the diaporama thing that can help you see this in a larger view, like this. Okay. Um, and I have to reduce this one so I can see. So we, we see it fine, huh? Oh, you see it fine. Okay, perfect. Uh, so, yeah, this is what we called as. It's a form of lazy journalism, which is called a listicle, which is a contraction of a list and a, a, an article, uh, which you will see very often in the media, like the 18 best uh, lesbian spots uh, on earth, or I don't know what. And uh, so I've made this to tell you a little more about my, my, my activity too. And can I not change? Oh, wait, because I'm sorry, I have. Oh, okay. So. 
Okay. Sorry, I'm having issue with my it just with tech minutes. Okay. But we continue we continue to see it just fine, huh? Okay. Okay. Um, so first, uh, first tip uh, would be to create, and uh, Jen is talking about this, uh, uh, alliances in the newsrooms. That's actually what we've been doing uh, with the French Association of LGBTI Journalists, uh, which is a tool having an association of LGBTI journalists, which has proven very, very useful uh, in a country like France, and which I think is useful in many countries. We created this in 2013 when the discussion, public discussion on the same sex marriage uh, was burning in France and uh, provoking a surge of huge homophobia, both in the streets and in the media. And I was at that time journalist in, in these big newsrooms, other were also facing in their own newsroom some uh, homophobia in the way the journalists were covering uh, the news. And uh, for one thing, it's one thing like when you're an activist to ask journalists to change the way they cover a story, to change the title. To, the, the journalists, they will always tell you, you're an activist, you don't know about my job, you don't get to tell me how to write this story. When they hear it from someone, who is herself or himself, themselves, journalists in the newsroom, they can't say this because we, as journalists, we know their job. They can't fool us with this, uh, oh, I can change it, oh, you're an activist, you cannot tell me this. So it's much easier to, 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 to talk to other journalists when you're a journalist yourself, and it, it has proven very successful with this uh, association, which is uh, still going on uh, now. And where we've been doing what we started with uh, is, um, a teaching journalist and producing a specific kit, which was called Information Without Discrimination, where we try to give some basic, really basic, because journalists, when it comes to LGBTI issues, I'm telling you, they need some basic things to understand because they're doing it so roundly and with uh, uh, so much uh, offense most of the time that we went for very simple tips and you have some example there on your screen like saying you don't have to say when you say when you say someone is lesbian but you don't have to say lesbian but girly or you, you don't have to uh, uh, um, keep misgendering uh, uh, um, trans people you don't have to keep uh, making offensive comments. So it's all very basic councils. And the kit actually uh, was translated in English. So we it's on the uh, website of uh, uh, the, um, the association. And it's really proven, we know, we know for sure from other journalists that it's, it's made a change in the newsroom in the way they, they, they cover uh, LGBTI issues. Then what I've learned too, which was really my third uh, uh, tip is that um, it's one thing when you monitor the media every day and try to look for everything they're doing wrong and there is so much on uh, minority issues. It's one thing to point them out uh, in a one shot thing like saying this is a very bad article, this is wrong. It's another to compile all those examples to show that this is actually a system that the way a TV show would go uh, every night doing some homophobic comments, lesbophobic comments on screen is not uh, an accident, a change that this night the show went wrong, we're sorry, no. You have to show that there is a, a kind of a system, something coming back always. And so that's what we do in kind of huge surveys on uh, TV shows, which also uh, the media like, like usually they, 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 you know, they wouldn't do it themselves, the journalists, they wouldn't go and cover um, uh, the, this show or this show uh, saying they have uh, racist comments, uh, transphobic comments. But when we do it as an association, then we do the work, we do all, all the stuff they should be doing, and then they talk about it in the media. So it's also uh, um, proven a quite a useful tool to do this, to focus on, on one show for one month and really give an overall uh, uh, view of what how wrong this uh, what wrong this show is doing. Um, uh, for um, uh, for tip, uh, do not hesitate to challenge journalists. You know, like for their um, really, but their professional skills. Like they don't just not only telling them you're having a homophobic coverage, but also telling them you're doing a bad journalist job. This is uh, always very impactful. So those are examples, for example, uh, that the, the French media would give the floor uh, always, always, always to um, uh, 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 LGBT phobic leaders and hate speech. And when you tell them 
well, it's homophobic, it's one thing, but what you tell them, you're doing false news, you wouldn't do this on another topic, like you, you, you're biasing the, the, the news when you only, only give the floor to uh, the, the same person, you're not showing the totality of information, and this they have more, uh, it's harder for them to face uh, criticism which focus on the way they do their job, and not specifically on uh, the way they cover uh, LGBT issues. And another uh, fifth example, more as an activist, or really what we've experienced, this is uh, with the uh, uh, French lesbian uh, activist group called We We We, which was fighting for IDF, which in France is PMA, is go for the easy, go for the thing that the journalist will, I mean, will find easy to take up. And like we had to illustrate IDF, so P. MA in France. How do you do this? I mean, how do you see, how do you show pictures about this? Are you going to show pictures from a laboratory, a technical medical act? No, it's too complicated to get a picture of this. Show them. They need the word PMA. So make huge uh, uh, banners, huge placards with these words, and then they will take the picture because this is a good illustration and very efficient illustration for this article, which means your group, we, 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 will also appear uh, on, on the pictures. And this is an example like still now when the French media have to talk about IDF they would go for our pictures like in all media and it, it's so it's very simple really uh, easy thing to do but think about what they will need what the journalists will need well they need something very easy to illustrate their articles they don't have it give it to them and it's the same when I say fifth the media which is also a, another tip uh, it's the same uh, um, uh, with how to do to make sure your activist, your actions uh, go live in the big news. And instead, very often I find that instead of sending press releases, instead of uh, trying to make the journalists come to you, go where they are already. Like this day, when it's an illustration, there was this demonstration, we knew where the camera would be, and they wouldn't get interested in the lesbians normally, they won't come to us and we would, send, if you send just a press release. So just organize something just where they are and they will, uh, then they will show what you, you, you're doing. And it's the same when I say feed the media, you also have to impose your agenda. Like tell them, I mean, the news, it's a story anyway. The journalists, they are telling the stories, their stories. So make yours and say it's true because what you say, becomes true. And this is an example of what we did with, with ELC. We sent something saying, uh, we had a meeting, just a meeting with the, 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 the ELC uh, in the Council of Europe in, uh, uh, in, uh, in Strasbourg. So we were a few lesbians coming to the Strasbourg, which is a, a, a French uh, city. And that we sent a press release saying, Strasbourg will then be the European lesbian capital for one weekend which was like a framing of it, like it wasn't really the lesbian capital. And then we saw that 20 minutes, which is once again, French big newspaper, put the title in an article, uh, Strasbourg, the town is the lesbian capital, uh, European lesbian capital this weekend. So it's also try to impress them, don't be shy, go for it. And, and the, the things that you say, actually they become true. And this is also some steep uh, uh, media activism. And I think, I mean, the example of Jenny is uh, 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 so huge. So I think you know everything about uh, uh, media activism as getting in the, the, the media, using entertainment and, and the media to um, uh, be uh, visible. And this is another example from Croatia, which has a pretty similar tactic. And it's uh, the activist Mima Simic. Uh, who um, um, participated to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire in Croatia as an art lesbian on screen. So very similar tactic and very uh, obviously for all the reasons Jenny already uh, uh, explained, a very, very efficient tactic because you're reaching a different audience there. And now another tip is uh, frame your own questions. Like um, as an activist or uh, just as a lesbian or as um, anyone going to the media, uh, especially when talking on lesbian issues, they will try to track you in their own uh, vocabulary. And, uh, you know, vocabulary is not just words. Vocabulary is an ideology, a sense of how they see the world. And for example, uh, when we were talking about IVF, they would keep, the journalists would keep asking me questions about surrogacy. 
every time. It's, in France, it was a way the um, uh, one of the counter movement, anti movement, uh, anti lesbian movement, anti gay movement has made it. They say IVF is like surrogacy, so everything. And uh, so I would refuse to answer any other question. And you can do this on the minute. Say this is not my, my this is not the topic. I'll be happy to discuss with you another time. But you did not invite me for this. So do frame your own uh, questions. Then. You have to teach journalists, as I said, a lot. Then there's a lot of pedagogy to do, but you have to teach uh, also activists. And I would especially say uh, uh, gay cis activists, which we are working with, because you know this is an image of a, 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 disc, a, a TV set on IVF uh, for lesbians, and there are five men and, uh, on the set. And among those five men, there are gay activists, from France, and you need to remember them, to remind them that they are one, not the ones who get to go uh, to talk about this issue when it's an issue uh, which uh, has to do uh, with uh, with women, you know. And so, for once, it's uh, because it's sexist, but also because it's not efficient. And that the more you are dealing personally with the topic. Uh, I mean, the better you can embody it on TV, and I'm not sure they were the one who were fit to do this. So also do not hesitate to teach activists uh, themselves. And then I think we, can, we will come back to this, but one of the big strategy I have been using, um, and I can show it for ELC, is about um, uh, uh, getting the uh, celebrities uh, to come into the game and help to use their visibility as celebrities uh, to make our causes uh, advance. And for this, we created the French, French Association of LGBT Journalists, a specific ceremony, which is called Art Dog, so Golden Art, which celebrated, celebrates every year people who are uh, making LGBT uh, topics uh, very visible in the media. Um, I don't know, should I take a few, just a few more minutes to show more specific about ELC, or do you want to? what we do specifically for lesbian um yeah do you want me to do you want us to look at the the video that goes with no. this oh, oh maybe later or i okay. don't know yeah yeah okay. no tell us a bit oh, you want it. to show the video like uh yeah okay i can show the video about uh, the coming out yeah okay fine so yeah uh none of it yeah it's a good idea yeah this is a, a video we made uh, because like about getting uh celebrities to to be out and visible well first they have to be you know to have decided to come out themselves and this is a huge issue in France and other places too but really really we have facing a lot of difficulties like we won't it's very difficult a lot of uh, French celebrities are in the closet whether really uh, the public field is uh, uh, safer than in uh, other countries where celebrities are more brave and are facing more difficulties but would still come out in France, we have many uh, difficulties. So what we of often do with the French Association of LGBT Journalists, we compare to other countries. And instead of directly criticizing France, we go to see what the others have to tell us in other countries. Uh, so uh, I told you I made, uh, I had received a scholarship to go and study uh, LGBT and media in the US for six months. And I used this opportunity to make a little video at the GLAAD Awards, which the GLAAD Awards are the big, uh, a ceremony uh, in uh, the US uh, celebrating um, LGBT celebrities, LGBT media, LGBT uh, TV shows and everything. And so I went and you see most of it is in English. It's subtitled in French, but you, uh, everything is in English, except there's a tiny thing because there was a Canadian who was uh, speaking French, but you should be able, it's two minutes to understand most of it. So. LGBT celebrity? <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, uh, French LGBT celebrity. Oh my goodness. Um, 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 uh, Marion Cotillard? I just assume all French celebrities are LGBT. <laughs> I don't know, it's, I need one. Up and I didn't have an example in the media of what it was like, to, of even what gay was. You know, it was very sheltered. C'est tellement important pour avoir quelqu'un qui peut regarder. Ah, lui ou elle est comme moi. 
French LGBT people in the public eye, come out, come out wherever we are, wherever you are. The world needs you. France, come on, you guys are at the forefront. So you have some of the best food in the world. You have some of the best people in the world. So much, so much culture. We're gonna love you. Please, please let the world see all of who you are, and all your wonderful colors. Yet there's so many things that are kept under the surface, whether that's racism or homophobia. And so if you're somebody who's in France, who's out, or who isn't out quite yet, understand that you have a responsibility to do it for these young people. Uh, so listen, live out loud. You, you know, be, be happy, be who you are. Uh, it don't cost a thing, and you'll be a whole lot happier, believe me. Get out of the closet, I'm looking for a husband. Okay, um, so should we, because you know, I can show some things about ELC more specific uh, st strategy, but maybe you want to switch to Q&A and I, I, I don't know. Mm. We, I have a set of, uh, of questions, and okay. so well, maybe maybe actually we can get into a, into a ELC in a in a in a specific uh, set of, uh, of of a discussion. But uh, I mean, at this point, I, I wanted to first of all thank you for the the crash course. I wrote that in on my personal wall that uh, people should follow this crash course into media activism. You took it very literally, and this is amazing uh, to have this. Uh, what is it like listic or what did you call it? Yeah, this uh, yeah, that's great. Um, and uh, I, I think what we could see from both of your intervention was that um, the power, or at least what that I'm taking away with from, from that is that it's a, a super powerful tool to not preach the choir, because that's one of the risks of activism is that you tend to when you create events um, through the uh, uh, organizations, etc, you might reach more people who are already uh, agreeing with you or just the haters. But in this case, you sort of maybe uh, reach out to the movable middle that is sometimes called, you know, like people who don't hate you or don't feel super strongly, but uh, wouldn't get out of their uh, couch to come see a conference or a demonstration. And, and so you um, enter people's lives and, and give them finally that image that they don't otherwise have of who are, who are lesbians what, and what do they, really do and want and which is basically just equal rights at the end of the day um, and it's very empowering for the community that's the other aspect of it through uh, coming out and I think this is a something that definitely deserves a lot of question as to why in Europe we don't have that same culture I mean in the US it's like a it's it's staged you see it you know we all know who are the okay of course um, American celebrities have the platform that they have because everyone around the world tends to to follow uh, American culture and media. But besides that, they also make they stage it. They make it a bit spectacular. They get invited to just talk about that, uh, and we definitely don't see that to the same extent in France and in Europe. Um, or it comes from activists like, for example, Jenny or or Alice or and many others. Um, and yes, of course, uh, <laughs> I was very happy that you brought back uh, the the memory of uh, Strasbourg cap lesbian capital because I live in Strasbourg and when I woke up that day and realized that just because, uh, you know, eight friends got together to work, we worked, we worked a lot that weekend, but, you know, just the way you captured it and waking up to living in uh, the lesbian capital and then getting a lot of friends being like, what's happening? What are we missing out on? Where is the, the you know, this lesbian I don't know what they were imagining, like some uh, crazy lesbian event, but um, no, it was very cool. And um, well, I think uh, some of the questions that are uh, raised about this, um, and you sort of touched upon it a bit about how to control the questions and how maybe to, in the way, control the scandal. Uh, I don't know if you, both of you want to share about how you choose uh, if or not to go, do you always accept any invitation? And uh, how do you take control of uh, when people are trying to, to, to take you out of the, of the, um, uh, the discussion into uh, you know, more dangerous uh, territory or situations you didn't want to, that are out of the topic and that may be, well, lesbophobic. So how do you control those things? And do you ever refuse to talk to certain people? 
I don't know, maybe Jenny, you want to tell us a bit? Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, I've had many cases like that, so I can I can share a little my my experience. Uh, but uh, it's what uh, it's what uh, Alice was saying in her presentation that I really love because it was very very practical, and I was a little checking what I've done, <laughs> and. Uh, I think it would be very useful like to share it with more activists that are public and that work with the media. Uh, for example, uh, I've had uh, being inv invited in uh, many shows that uh, once, for example, we had this huge debate in Albania because I was going into high schools and I was talking about LGBTI bullying and uh, the sharing uh, personal stories. So the media took one of the pictures that I have posted on my Facebook uh, without uh, asking me for any information like what I was doing in this uh, in this uh, information information sessions uh, in schools and um, sent out this very uh, bombastic article. Uh, writing LGBTI people are invading schools and turning our kids into gays. Uh, and then from the written media, this news was taken and was uh, passed in the television media. So many, uh, many TV shows were organized. Like I would go in three shows in one day. That is really exhausting. Uh, and before going in the shows, uh, because Christy, my colleague, is a journalist, he would always ask me, Jenny, tell me who's participating in this show? Like, who's your against uh, uh, person? Like, who are, because usually they are organized in a debate kind of way. Uh, and the moment I would ask the journalist, for example, who's participating in your show? I was uh, asking Christy, what do you think? Because he knows better how media uh, works and uh, if they are going to make you a trap or is it going to be just a show? And uh, once uh, the, there is this very sexist uh, TV media moderator uh, that has a big show. And uh, uh, I asked him who's going to come to the show. And I see that all the lists that he had invited were men. Uh, most of them, one was like a, a, a radical Islamist. Uh, one, the, one, all these men were very conservative, you know, from different fields, but they, they, they all represented something that was kind of a huge trap for me. And Christy told me, look, you have to tell to the journalists that you are not going to go in that show in those conditions because that's going to be like uh, destroying you. You, even though if you use arguments, you cannot use arguments like, uh, because it's just going to be a mess, like a huge mess, a fight, not, not a constructive debate because you can have constructive debates with pros and contras, but not in this kind of way. Uh, so I got saved <laughs> from that because, as Ali said, it's very important to have like LGBT journalists on board that know how media works and that know how activism works. So that has helped me a lot in Albania, having Christy all the time, like teaching me. Um, but I went in another show. I asked the journalist. He told me he had completely different people from what uh, I was, uh, what I found when I go. And the moment I go there, I see these people, I said, fuck, I'm like, at this moment, like I knew it was uh, totally, totally a trap. And the, the way how he created the narration of the whole show was that all these people were talking before me, not leaving me explain what I was going to do, what I was doing in schools, why I was doing that things in schools. So everything was thought, you know, in the in the beginning. And what he does, he's he has invited a very conservative gay guy uh, from Albania, uh, a rich guy that like goes in media and says, "I'm against marriage and I'm against this and I'm against that." So he puts, you know, putting because he wanted to create this narration of LGBTI people being divided and being against each other. So I had to deal with like the uh, 
white conservative men. I had to deal with a, a conservative a gay person. And uh, it's not much I could do at, at that moment to tell the truth. Like I, what I tried to do was uh, not to be part of their narrative, but what I did in that moment, I, I looked at the camera and I gave immediate message, just some short state uh, quest, uh, 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 statements to the community and to the public. So I ignored in one moment because I see they were not allowing me to speak. And I got directed to the camera and I said, not a lot of question, but at least, you know, I, I gave my, 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 my message. And then after the show, I wrote to the journalist, man, this was a trap, you know? And it was like, no, 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 you know, I love you. You know, I've always respected you in my show and stuff. And actually before he has been correct, but because before I was not talking about going into schools, like it was not a topic that was uh, very sensitive, you know, and that created that huge hysteria in the general public, because even people that were more uh, uh, accepted uh, towards our issues when it comes to marriage, when it comes to kids, like when it comes to going into schools, they all become conservative. They, they go to the other part of, of, uh, 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 of this. So uh, I think it's, uh, it's very important and I try to do it now. I didn't used to do it before because uh, I didn't knew how media worked. And now I have more confidence in myself. Every time I go in the media and I see journalists making like questions that don't get out the point I wanna make, I just ignore the question. I just say what I want. I give my own message, you know. I, I don't have to, to, to respond, as Ali said, to a question that has nothing to do with uh, what I'm there for, you know. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's very important to show to the journalists and, uh, that you respect them, you respect their work, but that there is a limit to, to what they can do to you or say to you or uh, it's not always easy, like, a, but I think we can do it, you know, we have uh, So you're not that the they're power to do the, Yeah, the moment you're on the TV set doesn't mean that you have to accept whatever. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. And um, always you have to be very clear beforehand what's going to happen there. Like you have to ask them to give you a skeleton of the show like what's uh, not maybe the questions but sometimes even the questions if you are very doubtful about the, the the way that this person always get to know to the show you are going and the presenter that is inviting you like uh, study a little the way they have been uh, covering other issues or what their weak points and their strong points are like if they are homophobes, if they are sexist, why should you go in their shows and give uh, credentials to them? You know, it's better you go, you do a live on your platform than, than give the possibility to these people to. Mm -hmm. And always work personally with journalists, like not only wait just to go in their studio, but meet for them for a coffee, meet them to talk beforehand about the show they are gonna organize, inform them, like maybe not do a training like with slideshows, but take them through the things that, yeah, that's what I've learned from my experience at least. Yeah, which, which also echoes also what Alice was saying that, yeah. uh, well, you basically need to, to work with them and, and bring them to your side, at least avoid them from saying stuff that are completely unacceptable, but also, um pr prepare a bit the platform um yeah. and uh, yeah so do your homework to not fall into yeah, that yeah, yeah. uh and actually that makes me um uh, think now of um i mean you know you're talking about uh you know how certain topics are still like way too triggering and uh i mean in france alice has been intervening a lot in the topic of uh invited at least alice and other uh, activists on IVF and it's just another one of those topics where even though in France we're at a different stage we we got gay marriage um, but I would not call it equal marriage uh, and and the one topic that was uh, bargained on and let down was uh, IVF and we still don't have it I mean in theory but it's still not implemented 
it's uh, so uh, it, it's the easy thing, you know. So lesbian issues, they're they're the afterthought. Uh, or, uh, can I give you an example? Uh, yeah. For example, I was invited yesterday, uh, no, uh, two days ago in a show. And uh, when, it, when it was uh, the question of me and my partner having a kid, uh, the, the, the journalist would always say uh, adoption. I said, it's not always the case of adoption, like two lesbians can have their own kids, you know? Mm -hmm. So you, you have to kind of like intervene and, you know, may also inform them because sometimes they make mistakes because they don't have that much yeah. information on that. So, yeah. Well, and actually, I I, um, I wanted to know, perhaps, yeah, Alice, well, if you wanted to, to build up a bit on, the, well, on this question, but also in that same time, if you wanted to, to share about the, your experience with Valeur Actuelle, because I find it fascinating. This is a very right wing leaning uh, magazine that's obsessed with Alice and has depicted <laughs> her as the, uh, the, the whatever the, the lesbian octopus and uh, the feminist terror and they keep on making covers and and huge articles about her uh, and so i don't know i find it i mean i find it amazing at the same time it's like a very personal attack and i don't know how you feel about it but um i still think it's so crazy and absurd that i still think it's a victory for lesbians i, I always count it as like yay that they're talking about you but i don't know maybe you feel differently because you're personally attacked so if you want to comment on this thing yeah, it's, uh... So uh, yeah, I can talk about them uh, uh, on, on, on the more general topic of um, when to say no, when to say yes. It's actually a very burning topic uh, also among activists because like, and this is my, my personal vision, I tend to say a lot yes. And I tend also to get sometimes criticized by activists themselves who would consider that we, uh, we don't, need the media, we don't, I mean, media activism is also a, a topic in activism uh, uh, itself and like uh, using celebrities, you're going to entertaining uh, media for some activists is not a, uh, uh, acceptable. So it's not only sometimes uh, having disagreements with the journalists, it's also with the, 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 the activists. And if I tend to say yes a lot, it's, it's for um, different reasons. It's because there are not so many requests for us, for lesbians really in France, it's really tough. And we've made all those surveys, even for much more uh, 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 famous uh, lesbians than me. They never get interviewed when, when the topic of the news is actually about lesbians, whether it's IVF or, or something else. Even then, like uh, a big uh, tennis champion, like. Uh, 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 Amelie uh, Moresmo will not get a call when she had her kids with IVF, so she knows about it and they won't think to invite her. So what I think is I, I like to use the platform and I think, uh, Jenny, you said, said something very right because in, 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 even in now in some shows where the framing would not let you uh, be able to, in a general discussion, make your point. You can use them. You can have a tactic to use them, like you were saying, talking uh, straight to the audience, making your point, your message. And I would say that for this, you have to think not only about TV. Not TV is not TV. TV is also what you're going to do with this video on the social media. And when you get to participate uh, in a show, then it's not only uh, the impact, it's not when it's uh, broadcast life it will leave afterwards it would go on leaving and then you can cut your video your participation on the show and show it on the social media to your community so look what we have been saying as lesbian activists on tv so you it's a broader uh, thought it's uh, of how to say yes or no and i would say also uh, then it's also a personal uh, way of uh, doing a strategy which is something and which is not a, a, a general truth you have to adapt but in France whether with the feminist group I'm with or uh, uh, with the LC also we've also tried to get as many person on the TV um, as possible like not use which would is also a very efficient strategy then you always say you're going on TV because you're good with the media you know them you'll be the best it's one choice which I respect but I think there's also a lot uh, when we I see the number of lesbians uh, which are we had a spokesperson on the uh, uh, ELC and different portraits and articles which has, have been made. It's also very important because it's also about empowering the other activists and 
of course, they will not be the best, but maybe for the, uh, at their first go, but then they'll learn. Then you have to do it to, to know how to do it. So it's also one of the strategy uh, uh, that I um, uh, that, that I like. And the rest, uh, Jenny said beautifully, you how to uh, make sure you have as much as possible things settled with journalists. And with them, I mean, it's, it doesn't mean, like when the journalist is having a request, I'm usually very nice to them. Like it's like also making sure that I respect the deadlines. I know I'm doing it right, then they owe me also because I'm you're asking for someone, I'm gonna find you someone immediately. But then I expect you also to be uh, so like being a very professional activist with them and, and respect the deadlines, respect uh, um, everything. So that's um, that's also something. Then yeah, other well, the, the story with this uh, right wing newspaper is like. Uh, so I'm not the only one they're targeting, but late, really they have a lot of uh, 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 um, um, targets, whether uh, among the anti-racist uh, activists, feminist activists, but lately they have been making like uh, two big covers where inside they had put uh, big pictures of me and uh, uh, um, uh, doing some uh, really wrong journalism. Th this is my limit, like they would call me to have an interview with me, and I, I wouldn't, I don't think I would answer. Whereas I, I say a lot, yes, really. But this, it's not about them, once again, it's the difference because, okay, I know they're homophobic. I could say yes to a, a homophobic journalist, but I'm not saying yes to a journalist that I know is going to lie. It's a difference when you go in an article on, on a TV set and are confronted to uh, homophobic leaders and uh, doing things. But if the journalists themselves, you know, they're not going to act as journalists, they're going to Really, they put some lies in their articles. They're making up stories, like, and then they go like a paparazzi. We got so uh, Silvia Casarino is my partner and also part of ELC. We were attending um, uh, a homophobic demonstration because, as a journalist, I wanted to see what's what's happening. And they went to take pictures of us and produce them and made a whole story about oh. I was an activist talking to journalists during the uh, demonstration and trying to impact their stories. They keep making up really, really that story and they keep being very intimidating because every time I do some action, they would uh, um, they, they, they say they are going to sue me and me and others and so on. They have really uh, this big target. Then I think, I mean, the only way to, 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 it's always very difficult to have the ponderation between should you talk about them? And I never do strictly like promote uh, what they're doing or, or, um, or should you be completely silent or should you reverse uh, the mediatization and use what they are doing uh, to, to, to make sure uh, you, you get uh, the, the, the power uh, from it. It's always very difficult. With them, I tend to let them in their, in, you know, in their, in their silliness. Uh, but with others, it's more interesting to, to, to go and uh, really fight for them. And what's um, another point I want to stress, not this one right-wing uh, article, which is really focused, uh, but some other shows, which will not be that much right-wing, which, which would be very problematic. It's also interesting to note that very often those shows would be the one inviting me or others. Why? Because of course, because they like to stage a fight for their, their audience and everything, but it is something to consider. When other more very polite and correct show, they would never invite a lesbian or I've been talking about uh, this, about uh, some specific case, for example, with a great uh, uh, anti-racist black feminist uh, journalist and activist Rokaya Diallo in France, who got uh, invited to be a regular uh, part of one show, which is problematic, but then they invited her to be part of, of the show, where some other very, very posh and uh, like we're doing uh, hype journalism, who never are only staying between uh, white men and never invite us as uh, a guest, let alone part. So it's it's a tricky thing. Huh? It's not a one way uh, answer, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's a very interesting point you're making, actually. And uh, I think it's 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 always uh, an issue that uh, in general, in all of activism, that um, at the end of the day, you also outside of your own bubble, you you get uh, a lot of interest from people who are the most uh, get well, triggered by you so mm -hmm. you have to to work around that and um i actually well in theory where we have uh, five more minutes i will cheat and give you a little bit more so that you can both say what you want but uh, so since we're coming to 
to the end. I think I, I just wanted to ask you each to maybe tell us a bit about um, what's coming, what to expect. Uh, and for example, I mean, Alice, if you can just take a bit more, um, use this time also to say about uh, ELC's media strategy, what it's, because you've used ELC a lot to develop uh, and also, you know, quite successfully uh, um, the, the impact and the outreach of, uh, uh, well, the lesbian genius uh, slogan and all, all these uh, all these different um, tools uh, you've had. Uh, so, and perhaps also if you have a, if you want to tease us a bit about your upcoming book that I know is very anticipated in France. And uh, Jenny, I know you have quite the actions uh, uh, coming up online, and even more so in the context of uh, the lockdown and having to be out there together while inside so maybe um i don't know maybe alice you want to just uh start and uh jenny then you can tell us what we should follow in the coming days for albania uh, alice, es muted. yeah about elc uh the thing is what we've been uh um trying to do from the beginning i think was very, very uh, like uh, base, uh, basic uh, uh, strategy, which was to get uh, the um, uh, the lesbian world as, oh, sorry, I was going, but maybe we don't have time. I'm, I'm not showing pictures, but you have to, uh, it's to try to get the lesbian world as much as possible on the uh, front line of media, because we believe the word by itself carried a lot of transgressivity and political power. And so actually was quite a, a, a success since uh, from the beginning of ELC, uh, media such as Fox News, the Washington Post uh, and uh, uh, other, uh, the BBC and all major uh, media got to use this word uh, because uh, we were uh, insisting uh, um, on it and got to so also what I call some lesbian imagery. So, um, so we're working a lot of, on, on creating, like creating a lot of images whether um, getting to know from the lesbian culture of the past and reenacting them in specific uh, uh, flyers or wording or everything. And the lesbian genius part, I think was all about it, like getting to coin some expression, like I say, impose your agenda, impress the media, impress the opinion, try to coin, coin some words which would be easily uh, reminded and uh, uh, use it because of the way you, you, you name the reality, it becomes, it becomes the reality. So if you got, call about, uh, talk about lesbian genius, people are gonna think, oh, okay, uh, what's about it? And then we were very proud to see other, like uh, some major, uh, for example, French uh, uh, directors or all start using also the, um, the expression and the media trying to, to say, like, like, like it was a reality. I really had fun because some journalists asked me, so, what is it about this concept of lesbian genius? What kind of philosophical tradition does it come from? And like it's something we made up, like it's like and an all this up before us. I mean, it's uh, so it's all about really uh, impressing uh, this kind of this kind of thing. And uh, we will go on with ELC. And as I said, our, our strategy is always trying to compensate for the lack of general uh, 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 visibility of lesbians by becoming uh, a, a, med a media ourselves. And then about the book, yes, thank you for mentioning it. So yeah, it should have been out now in, uh, in May, but because of the epidemic, it will be in October. So it's called Le Genie Lesbien, so Lesbian Genius, very simply. And it's uh, really about everything we've been talking yet there, a lot about journalism, uh, activism, and uh, lesbians. And I think it's an, an intro, it's, it's, it's something interesting I hope the content, I think, uh, I mean, it is interesting, of course, but I mean, uh, it's in on a big, big publisher in France, which is called Grasset, and I think that the fact that the publisher is accepting to, to, to uh, uh, call, have a book uh, published in good conditions, which has lesbian in its title, is a sign that there is this kind of a lesbian momentum. It's been so difficult. I've been talking to a lot of activists, and I'm talking also about US activists who are telling you, put the, this word lesbian in it and your book will never get published and everything. So we are having uh, also an interesting moment uh, there and I'm sure uh, we will make uh, the, the most of it. Thank you. Um, and um, yeah, well about that, uh, 
the, the lesbian word as uh, we're, we're seeing some changes now. We managed to get it quite a lot uh, on Lesbian Visibility Day. So that was, uh, that was, that was rather cool. Um, and uh, well, Jenny, uh, what about you? What do you have cooking? Uh, first, uh, I wanted to ask, uh, is the book gonna be in English also? Uh, it's in French for the first publication, but hopefully uh, we'll get translation. I'm uh, yeah. hopeful for this. That would be great. Yeah. Well, yeah, also sorry, because about the book, uh, I just wanted to, uh, having having had a bit of a, an inside uh, sneak peek before publication, uh, I know that you use it to talk a lot about your findings uh, from your the, the food right you did in the US, and that's super interesting um, to, to, to do this comparative analysis. So not just from the activism point of view, from uh, all, there's a lot of archives and historical work that you bring in this. I mean, it's just, uh, it's, it's going to be really, really amazing to have that out there. And I, I hope uh, I hope it gets translated because it's uh, interesting for, for everyone way beyond French borders. So Jenny. Okay. Yeah, uh, actually what I wanted to say even before, it's uh, what we tried to do, as Ali said, and it's a very good, it's something that I would recommend to everyone is create your own me, uh, media as a, as a movement as, or as an organization. Uh, because now we see that we have all the means to do it. You know, you don't need huge money to make the platform and, and everything. Uh, social media made it very easy for us. Um, in Albania, uh, Christy, uh, my colleague, started in 2011 with uh, Historia Ime, is in Albanian, it means my story in English. It started as a diary, actually, of an LGBT, his partner, and now it's one of the, it's uh, one of the only media that uh, uh, covers uh, not only LGBT, but human rights issues in general, because you see that in big media, it's very difficult to cover human rights. Mostly they are interested uh, in the, about human rights in the moment you have a scandal or you have something uh, exotic or something that attracts them. Uh, but otherwise you are totally ignored. Uh, and we created uh, that platform that usually had more like articles and then it passed, we reached it with podcasts. Now we are doing like we have uh, TV uh, Alianza LGBT on Instagram where we do like interviews, like as we are doing today, for example, with activists, with LGBTI persons, uh, we uh, we created this uh, book club online uh, that is like read queer where we read and we discuss about queer and feminist authors uh, and we have our own audience that you see every week is getting more and more uh, we created this queer got talent show online that is like uh, people send us their performances and we do kind of competition on likes that people do in social media uh, we created this uh, rubric that is called ask me everything where lgbti people give the possibility to general public to make them questions and then we 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 print we put we publish the the questions and what we have seen that it's very interesting is that media now is picking up this content big media is picking up this content and is putting them because media nowadays is becoming very lazy so they usually cut and paste and they usually want the content ready so we can use this laziness of theirs in our advantage and uh, so what what happened for example just uh, this last week is uh, we did this interview ask me anything in our social media with me and my partner and it ended up in all the big medias, not only online, but also in television. So I had televisions calling me for interviews, televisions like showing our pictures. And from this, I had the possibility to reopen the debate of marriage and kids because I said that I used my own story saying that me and my partner want to like um, be acknowledged as a couple and we want a kid and so on and so on like you start from your personal story and then you you represent the rest of community that has also your needs but like creating our i see like what i see for the future uh, for our movements is 
creating our own mediums of, of presenting ourselves and telling our stories. So that's, that's what I want to say. <laughs> You want to tell us about the online pride? How are you doing that? Well, so we thought uh, uh, we thought about how how to do the pride this year. We discussed all together, and we didn't want it to stop it, even if it's something symbolic, even if even if it's something new. We we wanted to have it because its pride is very important. I said it's not about numbers. It's not about the way you do it, walking, running, biking. It's it's about what it symbolizes and the visibility. So we decided to do it online. So it's going to be most probably on Zoom or uh, we are discussing a little about the platform. But we on on Monday we are going to launch it. Uh, so everyone that uh, would like. Can, can join us, we'd be very happy. Uh, 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 we will have invited some Albanian artists that are gonna sing from their homes uh, to, to join us. And we are gonna have some speeches uh, from the different community and uh, not only in Albania, but originally. And uh, it was very interesting, for example, because the moment we launched the Pride online, it was picked by all media. They really loved the idea that something was happening and it, it, it was coming in a new form. And they really wanted to know more about why we are doing it. But this gave us the possibility to say, for example, that for LGBTI people, quarantine is, and isolation is not a new thing, you know, that's the reality of our lives for centuries. And we have much to teach to the general public because of our resilience. We, we, we really can, can, can teach them about, uh, about how to make it survive. <laughs> so yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I love this as the, the, the final words, uh, like we have a lot to teach to the rest of the world. Yeah. <laughs> That's so true about resilience and creativity and uh, community and, you know, solidarity mm -hmm. existing, even though we can't be out and together. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, in theory, this is it. I don't know if there's something you remembered you absolutely wanted to, to say, but in any case, we will, this, this is uh, recorded so, People can go back and take the notes of whatever they missed. And also we will put the links to, uh, well, to the NGOs also, and to, to be able to follow the, the pride, um, uh, the online pride of Tirana uh, in, with, uh, through Alianza and uh, the different videos that have been shared uh, and all relevant links so that um, people can enjoy indefinitely. Um, did you want to add anything particular? No, well, thank you. Thanks a lot. No, it was a lot of fun. It was amazing. Yeah. And I love it, you, girls. Yeah, I love you. And it's actually great you say this about uh, for uh, LGBT uh, people getting uh, being so familiar with what uh, uh, isolation means because it's exactly also what say Milena uh, Markovic, who is a lesbian nurse in uh, um, uh, Serbia, and uh, we've just published an interview with her on uh, Dragana Trudorovic, and she was saying, I'm telling my colleagues what it's, we, we know what it's like to, to, to be uh, uh, yeah. isolated for years, and uh, we, we've known this, so it's, a, I think it's a huge drop what you're, 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 you're saying there, so, and it's always interesting to have the ecos. So thanks so much. Thanks for Thank you so much, and taking away Glitter your anger. I really love that. Mm -hmm. Feed the media, feed them. They're lazy, so feed them what they need to say. And most importantly, let's all continue uh, growing and creating our own media and uh, learning more about being a little media activist. Thank you so much, uh, Jenny. Thank you so much, Alice. I loved having you here. And um, well, on to other LLL sessions. Okay. Ciao. Bye. Bye bye.